I hope you enjoyed the films you've just seen. They were part of the program that we're talking about today called Dressing the Screen, which is a fashion film initiative and it's meant to promote and to teach fashion film overseas. So as part of this program, um, fashion film workshops are being established all around the world. One of these was Russia in last December. Tonight I'm very proud to have a panel with me of six fashion insiders from Russia. So I'll pass on the mic now for our panel to introduce themselves. My name is Vlasta, Vlasta Guleva. Um, I'm the owner and creative director of Sophie Goes Around. It's an online platform for creative platforms. Uh, oh, sorry, for creative projects. Um, I am currently based in Moscow. I used to live in London for three years. I studied in London culture fashion. I'm happy to be here. Hello everybody, my name is Natella. I'm the features editor of the Interview magazine, the Russian edition of the famous Andy Warhol's magazine, which was established in the United States in the 60s. Also very happy to be here. Hi, my name is Natasha Turovnikova. I am a little bit of everything in fashion. I loved it since I was born, so I tried almost everything. I've been ed educated as a designer, uh, working as a journalist, writing for Russian Vogue, been working on TV as an editor in the fashion program, doing a little bit of design, so, and uh, worked a little bit on this project in selecting young designers for the uh, for uh, for this um, for this project, working a lot with uh, young contests in Russia with schools. Well, my favorite part is to look for the new talents and be able to help them. So. We can talk about designers and videos um, a little bit deeper if you will have questions. Uh, hello, my name is Maria Pudan. Um, I'm a founder of uh, the first um, Russian blog about fashion film uh, in a Russian language. And um, uh, I'm starting interest in fashion film maybe uh, three years ago. And uh, the first uh, goal uh, in it was um, the first uh, the first uh, um, fashion film festival for Russian directors and uh, our creating was Diane Pernet. It's um, uh, very grateful, it was for very great for us and um, after that uh, I thought that uh, it will be my, my life, I like it and um, uh, the directors which we see on this um, um, showcase uh, we, uh, I help to find these directors, and I, I think um, uh, it will be great because I like uh, these directors. <laughs> uh, thank you. <laughs> uh, hello, my name is Anastasia Fedorova, and I'm a fashion writer and editor of the Calvet Journal. Uh, that's a magazine about contemporary Russian culture based here in London and Shoreditch. Uh, hello, I'm Jana Milkamov Reynolds. I'm a bit of everything in fashion, just like Natasha is. Uh, I used to be a fashion editor for a number of magazines in Russia whilst I was still living there, and I was a buyer for a store in Moscow. And then I moved to London, and um, I wrote a feature about Russian fashion for Days and Confused in the UK seven years ago. And I'm amazed at how much it has changed in the last seven years. Hello, um, I'm Catherine Ferguson and I am a director and I've worked with fashion designers um, for about the last five years. I also started the Bird's Eye View Fashion Loves Film strand um, at the ICA back in 2007 and I've been curating fashion film and promoting fashion film really ever since. Um, I now I work a lot with the British Council and um, have, been in, have been running these workshops with them in collaboration um, around the world for the last two years. We've been to 10 different countries and we also launched the world's first fashion film exhibition called Dressing the Screen, which launched in Beijing in 2012 and in Singapore in September this year. So that's me and I'm going to pass you back to Marie. I'd like to start with you Anastasia because obviously you're the editor of Calvert Journal which is an online magazine for you know, um, contemporary culture in Russia so I think you should have a quite good overview of where the creative scene is heading in Russia. Is there any quick overview you can give us from your perspective? Yep. Um, well, it's obviously not an easy question. 
but um, I can say I can't say for like the whole Russian culture, obviously. But what I work with every day is pretty much really exciting, and it's like really young and thriving scene. And I think it's due to the fact that most of people who work in creative industries now, uh, they're sort of in between 20 and 30, and they grow up in a really rapidly changing country, like after the collapse of Soviet Union. Um, and this change has been really exciting, and they kind of involved in international culture, but they still have something to say about what's happening in their, con their country, which is obviously very different. And important point to highlight is basically the influence of the internet uh, because I think uh, the best platform for this new talent to showcase themselves is obviously social media, blogs, various internet, like various internet platforms which didn't exist before so I think it's a huge advantage in Russia because you don't have to go through the institutions anymore, you don't need like museums or like you don't even need to basically go to university and study to like do amazing work, and this is what's really, really exciting now. I can see a lot of similarities to what we're experiencing over here because you know, especially if you if you take it back to fashion film, fashion film has been around to a certain degree, but there was just never a platform. So the internet has been a major player in promoting you know new ways of communicating fashion and giving you know young designers, image makers, creatives in general a voice. And I know a lot of your bloggers and a lot of your work online is the has the internet been very instrumental in giving young creatives in Russia a new sort of push to promote their work? I think um, when uh, the story is starting, uh, not uh, uh, and not a lot of time ago, uh, because um, uh, three years ago and four years ago, I have never been um, met something like uh, this uh, quality of fashion film. It was something new. It will, uh, it, um, it will, uh, some kind of um, feeling. Uh, the guys uh, just tried to to to, uh, to show something uh, for. He doesn't know for him, uh, only for himself. And uh, this is amazing because um, you can see what um, what they see, how he is, fe how they feeling. And uh, now, uh, when uh, they try to work with um, cool directors like uh, came uh, came us to Moscow, and uh, I think the level up and uh, we can see uh, a different, uh, uh, different levels between three, four years ago and now. And uh, for, uh, direct, uh, for di designers, uh, you, you can uh, hear uh, like um, uh, Russian designers so that it's first time for, for him uh, uh, to, to, show, to, to shoot the video and uh, they uh, will be a, a very interesting uh, experience. So after that, I had, uh, I um, speak with them, and they say that uh, okay, next next time, we, uh, all time, we will uh, shoot the video. Um, Catherine and me went uh, to Russia in December to be part of the workshop, and we were very surprised by a lot of aspects of Russian filmmakers and Russian designers. But I wanted to ask Catherine, who is obviously leading the Dressing the Screen workshops, and she, she has been to every country where the workshop has gone. What are your specific um, inspirations that you've taken from Russia? Where does it differ and where is it very similar? Or is it very similar to London? What is, how would you describe the Russian fashion film landscape? Um, good question. Um, I really enjoyed our time in Russia. I thought it was fascinating. Um, I thought the approach wasn't worlds away from how it's approached here in London, I have to say. Um, what I really enjoyed was seeing designers and filmmakers who collaborated who were really trying to explore the Russian heritage and the location and to really bring a bit of, the own, of their own culture into their filmmaking. I mean, that's definitely the films um, that stood out to me as being um, very interesting. And um, I think lots of designers and filmmakers who are going to do fashion film across the world 
really need to keep that in mind. You know, it's about trying, it's not regurgitating what's happening in the four fashion capitals because, I mean, it's all been done to death anyway within fashion film. And I think the way to really create something strong is by bringing your own identity and heritage into it. So I found that really inspiring that it happened in Russia. And I'd love to see a lot more of that coming out of Russia with personal explorations of heritage and culture. I think in the world of globalization, when everybody's dressed in Zara all around the world, in Chanel all around the world, only specific cultural things you, you can surprise the world with. And um, in that case, I, I want to say a few words about Georgia, its former Russian Republic, which is a um, country right now <clears throat> on the Black Sea. Uh, we missed it um, in the 90s, and we missed the huge a uh, layer of, of culture, and Georgia is still providing the world with this culture. You can see there's a corner of uh, Georgian designers here. There's very interesting contest in Georgia. Maybe it will be your next destination to go to Georgia and do film um, project over there, because they really have something to say there. So that's, that's the saddest part, that, uh, for, from, from my point of view, from, from this project, that it wasn't in a very good way Russian enough for, for, for the world. I would question what Russian enough is in the first instance because I would argue that um, Russian today is not, it's certainly not about Russian dolls and uh, old shawls and babushkas and da 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 and I would say that the post-Soviet Russia is, is, is a territory where all the Postmodernist cliches, the bricolage, the death of the author, da da da, are blown up to unprecedented si size because we are, as a, gen as a first generation, to grow up in this no man's land. We are so confused and lost as to what we are, where we come from, what is it that we've left behind. Do we want to? inherit anything from it, or do we want to renounce it completely? That, I think, this complete lack of references, any references that would be easily recognized by a non-Russian eye, I think this actually captures the Russianness as it is at the moment. Uh, this, I really don't know what to make out of who I am. <laughs> I think that is what the Rus contemporary Russian psyche is about. <laughs> Actually, I was thinking that um, it, it really has an explanation that uh, a lot of Russian artists, a lot of Russian designers, they don't really get inspiration from the heritage and they are really looking into the world around us because, well, that's really easy to explain because we lived in the Soviet Union for 80 years and we had a huge lack of European culture. And we, we, we really missed it. And you know, everything that was from Europe, like, I don't know, my dad brought jeans for me and they were from the United States. And it was like, you know, something from the completely di different world. So now when we actually got our doors open and we, we, we can go outside our country, we can get in inspiration from the, the whole world. That's also very exciting, you know, because we, we didn't have it. We, we couldn't do that. So, I mean, maybe that's an explanation why we are not really digging very much into our heritage and are looking for the world around us. Like a simple example is Gosha Rubchinsky, who's like probably the most famous Russian designer like in the world. And what he did, he basically uh, was talking about Russia in an international language because like his visuals are same visuals as like days and confused and like ID and the face and so on. But this is like a vision of Russia. It's not like his sportswear, which is like so exceptional that everybody wants to buy it. It's basically this like picture of grim Moscow suburbs with like high rises, which never, no, nobody ever seen before, which is like this face of like Russian teenagers, which nobody seen before. So I think for a Russian designer, this is really one of the strengths to use is basically to show this and explore the world, which like nobody seen before. No matter what a person produces, there's always going to be some sort of influence. So even if Russian aesthetic doesn't really know where it's placed, as you've been saying, I think they will take influences consciously or subconsciously from somewhere. 
So um, for, for me, like as a person who's only been to Russia once and who is um, working for a fashion film platform over here in London, it's extremely exciting to see something that incorporates a local aesthetic into it because it's different, because it's original and because it's something that we haven't seen. I wanted to talk to Catherine because you've been running, um, you've been creating fashion film festivals for, since 2007, eight. Do you see Russian fashion film or was this your first experience with the medium in Russia? I have to say, I think this was my first experience, to be honest. Um, yeah, I mean, well, back in 2007, I struggled to find 10 fashion films that could be shown full stop from that year. They, they, they just didn't exist. Bar Show Studio pioneering the genre and a couple of amazing designers in the UK, really. There really weren't any fashion films and certainly none, none from Russia. Um, you know, I mean, I think what's been fascinating working on the Dressing the Screen program and working around the world is just seeing how important fashion film is becoming to the rest of the world and it puts designers on this global platform and it wasn't um, previously possible. And I think, um, I think we're going to see an awful lot more of it. I'm really, I'm really excited to see what else does come from Russia, but I do agree what you said about... I mean, it doesn't even have to be heritage or location, but it's having something... I mean, it's hard enough within the UK to get work that's original these days because everything's being regurgitated over and over again, image-wise. So it's, I think we're just thrilled when we see a new style. So that's, I think that's what we mean by that, isn't it? I just wanted to add very quickly that um, when I was watching the films, I figured that I obviously saw a lot of familiar faces that I haven't seen in many years, so I was almost a bit tearful at times. <laughs> but um, uh, it was interesting for me to see that uh, a lot of filmmakers were people that I used to know as photographers. Um, uh, at, least, at least three of them as very good photographers, not necessarily fashion photographers as well. So it's interesting for me just to see how... Um, be, they were using very strong narratives in their work anyway, and it seems to be a very logical move for them, and I'm sure that you helped them to sort of fulfill this potential that they had. But um, it's interesting that you're saying that there is not a lot of fashion film. I'm wondering if, a lot, if more Russian photographers will be moving into that medium go, going forward. But I, I'd like to speak to Maria about that, because um, you have set up... Um, the Fashion Film Digest in Russia, which is a fashion film platform. How much is this medium established over there? Are people doing it and who is doing it? Is it fashion photographers or is it filmmakers? Uh, not a lot of. As a rule, it's um, a people who um, uh, finished uh, to learn on um, ca cameramen, directors, on the Russian um, University of Cinematographer, like Vgeek or uh, something uh, the same university, and uh, they uh, all his life uh, shoot the video, and um, uh, only I know only um, uh, one or three uh, directors who are starting his uh, career uh, career uh, from photographers. So, because um, in in Russia, actually, uh, like uh, for uh, for directors and for d designers, we uh, have don't have um, a product. We have uh, we haven't luxury product. We we haven't uh, cars, uh, perfume, uh, cosmetics, uh, uh, jewelry, and uh, uh, more di more directors. Uh, Statens uh, to shoot his film not f um, from this um, this kind of um, items, no. and uh, photographers uh, working with um, uh, with uh, magazines, and uh, they can work with it. And the directors try his work uh, with something interesting here. Uh, working with the stylist and um, it not advertising it's uh, only if uh, only they uh, uh, it's only in his mind and they practice in it and they um, can do it amazing but i wanted to find out 
about the contemporary fashion scene in Russia, because when we went over there, we had a great overview of, um, of filmmakers and fashion designers. But in your eyes, who are the sort of rising stars and who are the talents that could benefit from a medium like fashion film? Well, to tell you the truth, uh, those videos that we saw, they really represented the scene, what we have right now. There's completely young designers who's showing their first collection uh, here, on, and there's established designers like Arsenikum, Dima Loginov, or Viva Vox, um, Andrei Artemov uh, with the be be uh, background of a stylist. So, in a way, you saw the cut of uh, what we have right now in our market. Um, the biggest problem for them, uh, of course, there's a lot of designers right now. Um, suddenly, everybody decided to be in fashion, suddenly, everyone decided to be stylists um, and, and designers. But the biggest problem for the market and for us, for, for, the, for the business, for the, for the industry, is the final client. Uh, people still afraid to look different, people still afraid to be um, visible, people still like to be hidden behind the known brands and um, um, expensive clothes. So that's why lots of um, Russian designers not succeeding on um, financial side. But they do have their clients, they love what they do, and for many of them, the financial um, wealth is not uh, the target. A lot of those kids who've been showing here the video, they just can't live without being a designer. Uh, Artur Lamakin, um, Why Not Sky, you know, with his video, you know, he's such an underground person, you would never believe that he's making clothes, but he can't live without not doing it. Um, uh, Lesia uh, with the collection Les, she came for the contest um, as a kid from a, um, a third grade in university and she brought a, a lookbook that she made on an iPhone. And actually it was, you know, the, the project was done. She didn't need anything else. She created the, the, the world uh, and people believed in it. So it, it's more about um, those fanatics. Our business, our fashion business is about fanatics who just can't live without it. And I would say that big magazines not that much support uh, Russian uh, designers because they, they're not able to pay for advertisement and uh, they succeed in them, them, themselves. So that's about it. I think generally, obviously, um, the educational system is different and the sort of chances and the funds that are available for young designers and image makers might be different. And I wanted to talk to you about um, what is there available. I mean, if we think very practically, if you're a young designer, you live in Moscow, you just, um, you're going to fashion school, what do you do if you don't want to sort of go with the system that you've just described? Are there funds? Is there an educational system that will support you? No, unfortunately not, of course. And our schools is very old-fashioned in, in, in those terms. We have a very strong art education. All designers is learning so much of uh, um, sketch, sketching, painting. They're all great artists in, in terms of, of real art. But in terms of um, pattern making and all those new technologies in production, uh, we're not so well prepared in our schools. But to tell you the truth, we have some one magical school which is in Omsk. It's uh, far, far away in Siberia. And they do have an amazing faculty of fashion design. And each time I'm there um, for the contest or some, for exam, out of 30 collections, I can put the highest mark for 10. And I think it's very high level of, of quality of what they're doing. And lately I started to tell them that Moscow, uh, they don't need to take Moscow as a final spot for them. I'm really telling them to put their portfolios in envelopes and just send it out to, to the world, to reality, learn language and uh, be there. Uh, Moscow in, must be just the gap the, before the bigger jump. Uh, but the, the biggest problem again and again that uh, people are afraid to look different. If you go into the metro, people dress much nicer right now, but still uh, unique people would feel very uncomfortable being very... It's not London streets, you know, Moscow. So that's, that's what, which is not helping to, to develop uh, young Russian design, I think, on my point of view. The first Russian designer that I became very um, conscious of was Tigran. And the reason why I became conscious of him is because Nick Knight found a fashion firm of Tigran. The whole thing must have been produced on about £2.50. But, um, you know, it was seen by everyone, including Nick Knight, and it made it into a um, show studio in the end. So I think that was a very, very successful piece of advertising for his brand. 
So, um, judging from the scene as you've described it, do you think the internet is the solution? Definitely, to yeah? absolutely, and and that's um, that's that's huge right now with Instagram and Facebook being able to be visible all around the world. I'm always telling kids not to be afraid to promote themselves, to write them people to send their pictures, go shake hands and uh, just be there. Of course, definitely, like everywhere else. I think that's the future. That's when they don't need to be advertisers. That's when they can promote themselves. Uh, I think internet is great in uh, Russian fashion also because it's a great like building community tool. Like, basically, imagine it's a huge country. Like, you have... Probably uh, the closest town would be like 200, 300 kilometers or even more. And basically, it's not only for fashion designers, but for artists as well. Basically, you see someone's work who lives like on the other edge of the country and you feel that you can relate to it. And so internet gives you like great avail availability like to collaborate, produce work together. So I think this is quite important as well. I also wanted to ask you, Flaza, because you have a very successful blog. Have you realized over the past years that film became a more accepted and more established and more shared medium to promote work of designers online? Yeah, totally. Because uh, internet came to Russia a little bit further than in Europe and obviously New York. Um, I think it's a big move for designers and all creative uh, talents to showcase the projects online because um, all the social networks and blogs they, they can use to get in touch with the agencies and clients. Uh, they're also more visual nowadays and a lot of Russian people, especially young people, they, they have problems with writing in English. Um, with using Instagram or other social networks, it becomes more easier for them like, to target the audience just with visual things. Um, yeah, and also because they don't get any subsidies from the Russian government or no grants, no, nothing at all, it's easier for them to take part in international projects and apparently they can be seen by um, you know, clients or someone that could be interesting in what they're doing and they can get some help or PR or be um, enrolled in a huge project, at least as an assistant. And also, because we don't have, um, we don't have big productions in Russia or, you know, um, it's really, hard to, to do internship. We don't have the whole culture of internship that's really popular here in London or New York and different fashion cities. So it's really hard to get in touch with the people from the industry. It's almost impossible from, from just art student who is willing to, to do something in fashion. I went to Asia um, and I spoke to a lot of the design schools over there and their big problem is that they've got incredibly talented people but because there are no government um, funds, there are no internships, there are no employment possibilities, what happens is that the, the talented graduates, they leave and they basically emigrate the, the local fashion scene. Where, is that what is happening in Russia? Do, do the good people leave? Totally. They leave to London or New York once who who have like family support, they're going to study somewhere in like fashion colleges all around the world. And recently I realized that a lot of people who studied here in London, for example, they're coming back because they want to do something in the country. That, yeah, that, that's really good for... Why, why do you think that is? Do you think that is a pride in, you know, like is there a pride connected to the heritage? Do they want to come back? Or is it a business plan? I, I hope so. I, I think it could be both. Because Russia, it's emerging market, and it's really good market. You know, everyone is they, all brands they want to sell there. So, for me, like being educated abroad and doing something in Russia, that's the best thing you can do actually, because you're linked to both, like to clients and to the market, and you you can work a, a kind of a bridge between two. 
Um, I just wanted to add that the, the beauty of Russia uh, is that it is not a saturated market, unlike the UK, unlike the Western world. And uh, so everything is possible if you are passionate enough, if you persevere enough, if you're lucky enough, everything is possible. The um, what would be the be opposite of beauty, the non-beauty of Russia, is the complete uh, absence of an industry as a such. As such, so young designers, a lot of them really have no idea that there is a wholesale price and a retail price. You have to tell them that, that what sort of margin the stores have to make on their clothes, and little, very, very simple things like that. They, there is no education, or as far as I'm aware, or if it is, then it's not working very well. Um, th that would tell them these simple things about how the fashion market works and um, moreover there is no production there because it, it died all our glorious textile industry just sort of died in the post soviet years so so there are the, there are good aspects such as emerging markets more there is room for everyone and then there is the, there are there are the bad aspects but also i wanted to mention the most famous probably recent young Russian emigre designer, David Koma, who was recently nominated a creative director of uh, Thierry Mugler, and we're all very proud of him. <laughs> I just wanted to add, you mentioned Tigran before, uh, Tigran Avitisian, and I know that he was offered a place at Acne Studios before he actually came back to Moscow. He have chosen to come back to Moscow and start his own brand. So I think it's basically like two different paths. Like if you want like a safe job, you want to work for a big fashion house, you obviously need to live abroad, but to start something of your own is like, Russia gives quite like good possibilities. Another thing I want to touch on is, uh, obviously, Russia has been in the press for various reasons recently. One being um, the apparent prejudice against the LGBTI community. When Catherine and me went over there in December, it was quite a topic. At the same time, though, um, in the one week we've been over there, I personally didn't experience that it was very much affecting the scene. Is it something that is an issue in Russia, or do we only perceive it as that from the outside world? I think that that's a really good question, because I personally think that the European society is making really too much fuss about nothing. Because in Moscow, in St. Petersburg, in big cities, um, in, in this um, fashion society, you can never feel any um, discomfort about, about the law. I think, um, well, we have a joke in Russia, it says that the harshness of Russian laws is compensated by the non-necessity of obeying them. So the laws can be very harsh, but you don't really have to obey them. There, there, are, there, were, there was not a single case that was started with this anti-gay propaganda law or something. So um, to be honest, I never met anybody, any fashion designer, any artist, any talent who felt some problems being gay. Um, I think that it's, you, you remember the paragraph 28, which was like in the United Kingdom in 2003 or something? It was also about um, the um, n no propaganda of homosexuality in schools or something, but there was also not a single case on, on that law, and then it was just um, banned. So it's the same in Russia. That's my personal opinion. Obviously, there is massive, you know, violence and prejudice against the gay community also in other countries. But in Russia particularly, their focus is on there now because it seems like a step backwards. And, and when you speak to people in London, they actually are affected, which is quite interesting listening to you, where you're saying within Russia they aren't as much. Don't get me started. <laughs> well, I... Um, I agree that you can in Russia, and that is a very Russian thing, uh, if you are part of the creative community, you are very likely to live in an ivory tower with your fellow creatives, not trying to engage with these surroundings as little as possible, which I think also goes back to, to our discussion that we had earlier as to why do Russians not incorporate 
their immediate surroundings in their creative work because they don't want to. This is their resistance strategy. I have nothing to do with it. I don't touch them. They don't touch me. That doesn't affect me. So I'm sure that, indeed, if you are surrounded by this protective bubble of the creative community of co and your only movements are from your house to your car to the party back to your house to another party yes of course you will not feel affected however as mary is saying why is this discourse in place in the first place and um i remember at some point um, when when the, when this law was just being discussed, I think, or it was just about to be implemented. I posted um, on my Facebook page, I've posted uh, some pictures that I took in Paris of a little exhibition at the Marie du Troisième with uh, photographs of same-sex couples uh, that consisted mainly of, of celebrities. So I posted on my Facebook page saying, this, and, there, and there are kids playing around. And I posted my Facebook page saying, well, you know, there are photos of same-sex couples and there are kids playing around, nobody's dead. And then a very prominent Russian designer comments, who is my friend on, friend on Facebook and my friend in real life as well, makes a comment saying, I don't understand why you're posting this and I don't understand why these people, like Yael Naim or and, uh, these, these big stars, needed to have these photographs of them taken. What's wrong with them? We're not interfering with their lives. We're not in the way of them sleeping with the people of the same sex. And that is the major problem. The idea of an average, educated, creative, progressive, pro-European Russian of what gay rights are about is not being put to jail for sleeping with a person of the same sex as you are. Uh, yes, it is great not to be put to jail for that. But uh, if we are talking about inclusion and and uh, being liberal and being and upholding liberal values, it should be about a little bit more than that. And it's just the Russian mentality has not yet embraced that. I'm afraid. Yeah, I just wanted to add that I think it's not entirely good for creativity when the society is becoming more conservative because it's like a natural opposition, like creative people versus conservative society. And it's really, really sad to see that, what's happening there. So it's literally, I mean, no matter how it involves you personally, if you are like making art or fashion, it should involve you like by default because you are supposed to speak and you are supposed to like be on the right side, right? <laughs> Yes, well, exactly. Conservative, upholding conservative values have ne has never in history been good for, <laughs> for creativity. Uh, also, I would say that uh, uh, I think it prevents Russia from, from attracting talent from abroad. I was speaking to somebody who was offered a job in Russia as uh, he's a very sort of rather high-profile uh, fashion PR person and he was invited to join the management of an, uh, this up and coming project in St. Petersburg and he was saying to me, listen, I'm, I'm really not sure, do you think I should go? The salary is amazing, the project looks fantastic. I do not want to be afraid to walk down the streets with my boyfriend and, and get... I told, I told him to try, yeah. <laughs> The fact is sometimes perception becomes reality, you know, the way how people perceive it is how, you know, it's going to influence how they're going to act about it. Um, but I mean, I am happy to hear that within there is not a massive, massive influence on the daily life of, you know, the gay and lesbian community. And this is also what I experienced when I went over there. And it was really refreshing to see because um, from the outside, this is not what we're getting communicated to. The last po two points I wanted to discuss are, are there any platforms? I know there's Fashion from Digest which has been um, establishing fashion film in Russia. But if um, a designer and a filmmaker decide to create a film um, to showcase their new season, where do they put it? Where do they go? Do they go to the international fashion film festivals or are there any places in Russia where they can um, display their work? Actually, the video that was um, done by Lesi Paramonova, Lesi, this is, that was her fashion presentation. She made a video film and she uh, showed it in the Gorky Park under the open sky and it was her um, presentation of collection. Um, she was one of the first ones. I think, why not? I think it's possible. Probably Mashum can tell more where they can expo explore themselves. 
Um, um, uh, of course, um, uh, we uh, now we're trying to um, um, to organize a platform uh, like um, uh, fashion um, TV, not not fashion TV in. Uh, catwalking on backstage on the only uh, video art and fashion film uh, and uh, we try to organize it on uh, department stores showrooms and um, some interesting place like that uh, concept stores with bar and restaurant and I think it's a uh, very great idea because uh, this video uh, not uh, 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 not to sleep on internet and uh, stay only internet. Uh, and any people um, sh uh, can uh, to see it and um, uh, to to take uh, your opinion about it. And uh, you, he um, and th uh, they will know uh, that uh, fashion film uh, exists uh, in um, in in uh, in Moscow in Russian. And uh, I think uh, if it uh, will more, if uh, these films uh, we will the, sh the shoot, uh, and uh, for directors and for um, designers it will be good goal. And lastly, I just want to um, ask Catherine. Um, I remember when you've been working on Bird's Eye, um, the last time you created it, you've been looking at Arab female filmmakers. If you were to create um, a screening that is concentrating on Russian fashion films, what would be of interest to you? Would you be looking for something that goes to the standard of you know, the London produced work, or would you be looking for something more specific, more different? Well, I think, as I said before, I, mean, I am personally interested in heritage and identity and personal stories that are told through dress via than all out consumerism and hard sell of garments. It just, as a curator, it doesn't particularly interest me. So um, I think that I would um, definitely be looking for stories that had a bit of truth to them and. Um, and yeah, had, and I think narrative storytelling for me is definitely something I'm more and more interested in. And documentary, actually, fashion documentary, I think is a bit of a missed trick for most um, fashion designers. I think it's a wonderful way to, especially if you merge the high visual then with the actual reality, I think it's a pretty um, uh, poignant combination that needs to be explored better, really. So I think those are all things I'd look out for, personally. From our experience going to Russia, we were incredibly excited about, you know, not seeing only the design talent, but also the image-making talent, and to see what people managed to put together in the short time that we had over there. Um, I'm um, sorry, but I will have to wrap this up. For everyone who wants to see the films that we've screened tonight, they are going to be on Show Studio, together with some specially commissioned essays, and a lot of them will be of writers, actually, that are here in the panel with me today. Um, also, you can read more about the Dressing the Screens program online and you can see, obviously, the International Fashion Showcase if you want to know more about the project. Thank you so much.